this was supposed to be the very first logo sin we ever did, but we cut it because we wanted to make videos under five minutes or some shit. Anyway, the origin of this sin is that Chris was a projectionist when this movie came out, and he interlocked two prints through seven projectors on opening night, and he wanted to make sure the sound was good in each auditorium, which meant he had to sit through these logos all 50 seconds of them, including a silent bat logo, seven goddamn times back on July 18th, 2008 at midnight. And, oh yeah, he ran Mamma Mia that night. Two people showed up. Good for them. Also, Discovery. Also, also, DC Comics. This opening heist scene is so good that we are literally doing it a disservice to be in our stupid sins video. Again. So we'll remove three sins and hope Satan forgives. Oh, isn't that cute? William Fickner thinks that he's in the movie Heat. You will never be in the movie Heat, William Fickner. Stop trying to be in the movie Heat. Where did you learn to count? Hey, I know you're a bad guy who blames others for your problems, but didn't you just ask? He's out, right? I mean, you thought he was out too. You were just looking for confirmation from a guy you've barely met. Where's the alarm guy? The boss told me when the guy was done, I should take him out. Strangely, I didn't think that the same thing could happen to me. Should I have someone coming behind me later, but oh well. This guy ducks all the way to the floor, but the other robber shoots at shoulder level anyway. What bus driver? Luckily, the bus driver comes crashing through at this very moment and saves Joker from dying in his own double-crossing heist. Weird how Gotham patterned their whole license plate after Illinois, and that Gotham, a city, has its own license plate. I believe whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you... Stranger. Bravo for one of the best villain reveals ever, and of course, Heath Ledger's performance. Can't Heat's William Fickner just spit this thing out? Awesome! Joker timed this shit so well he was able to get right into a queue of other school buses that just happened to be driving by at the time. And none of the other buses seemed to care, because they're buses. Cameoing this idiot. Okay, laugh all you want at these two fake Batmans, but at least they have the wherewithal and know where a major drug deal is going down and are trying to stop it. I mean, what did you do when this was happening? That's right, nothing. Still to this day, don't know where the tumbler is coming from in this shot. We know it can do a lot of nifty things, but in this case, where did the tumbler jump from to get here? That building across the street? Also, if Batman knew a drug deal was going down, why is the tumbler what he needs for the job? Does he really need a distraction? And I see Batman still has no problem smashing up private property as long as bad guys get taken down. Some of the marked bills I gave you. My detectives have been making drug buys with them for weeks. This bank was another drop from the mob that makes five. So how did you find out about the other four? This place got robbed and just happened to have marked bills left behind that you could scan. Furthermore, why did it take until this bank got robbed for you to find out there were marked bills here? William Fickner thought people should know this is a mob bank just by looking at it. Do you trust him? It'd be hard to keep him out, and here is this stubborn as you are. If Batman really could do this, we should also be seeing it during times where it matters. Here, he's just being a dick for no reason. Bruce made Alfred go through the trouble of this whole ass breakfast for no reason, just because he couldn't be bothered to communicate. Batman has no limits. I guess you mean the mythos of Batman, but even then you're wrong. People know he can't shoot lasers out of his eyes, just for one example. He can't drink a whole gallon of milk in under an hour. He can't do a passable Pacino impression. Should I keep going? Sorry I'm late, folks. This is like the preemptive you're late. Is he late for a reason? No. Does his lateness cause any issues? No. It's just another example of Hollywood having characters be late, and or chided for being late just to pad the runtime. Okay, so Bruce brought a gun into court to maybe kill Chill in the first movie. Now here, a goddamn witness has brought a gun into court to kill Dent, and Gotham City needs to put some metal detectors in their courtrooms. Lightly irradiated bills. Fancy stuff for a city cop. Are you high? Gotham is home to some 30 million people. That's one of the largest cities in the world. Their police department should have the funds for and access to all the latest crime-fighting technologies. The movie wants to make the DA know for sure that Batman is already involved, but there are other, better, more rational ways to do that. Like, say, video or audio of Gordon meeting with Batman on the roof where the bat signal is. You gonna count me in? Yeah, this town, the fewer people know something, the safer the operation. Yeah, but it's going to require all the SWAT teams in the area to know about it anyway. So what's the difference if Harvey knows? Wayne Tower looks different as f Gotham City is proud of an ordinary citizen standing up for what's right. Gordon just said in the previous scene that the official policy was to arrest Batman on sight. And now here's the city's DA telling a Russian ballerina that he's proud of Batman. And I'm not saying he's wrong, but I am saying that this scene is really long and ultimately not that interesting. <laughs> the mob has metal detectors, but the courts don't. And maybe this is some kind of commentary, but Nolan never returns to it. So I think it's just a sin, especially since Joker shows up later having totally bypassed it anyway. I don't know what this monitor is, and I don't want to know. All I know is that these gangsters in Lao make more than enough money to use tech that doesn't require two dudes to haul a battery-powered TV into a kitchen for a Google Hangouts. As you're all aware. Also, there is no camera on this TV and no microphone anywhere on the table or in sight, so I'm kind of curious how he is able to see and hear them. How soon can you move the money? I already have. How the f*** do you pull that off? Does Lao own all these banks? 
There's no indication that he does. So how does he go to a mobbed up bank and take out all the cash without the mob knowing about it? Oh, e e aha. All these gangsters just sit calmly while this guy who stole 68 million from them walks into the kitchen and fake laughs like he owns the place. He even instantly murders one of their henchmen and they still remain calmly seated, awaiting his proposal, which they knew was coming somehow. It's simple. We uh, kill the Batman. <laughs> if it's so simple, why haven't you done it already? This Maroni jabroni who took over for Falcone would be Tony at CinemaSense. Enough from the clown! Are we gonna get that long-awaited Spawn versus Joker fight that I've been planning since 1997? It'll be part two of the Spawn Kills Clowns trilogy that will culminate in the other long-awaited fight between he and Pennywise. I've said it before, but putting a beacon on top of a roof where Batman regularly visits is probably not the best idea, since there are people looking to kill Batman. There are windows everywhere around this roof. Oh yeah, Gordon. I almost had your rookie cold on a racketeering beat. If she's a rookie and before working for Gordon, she worked in a different department, how did you work that case up so fast? And how was she offered an end to the racketeering system in her first few months on the force? Dirty cops were what? Like, she's hot, let's recruit her. Have you people ever been to Broadway or the New York Ballet? Chose to not just cancel for a week to go yachting in the Caribbean. There are contracts and producers and lawsuits that would happen. This is a cute plot point, but it would literally never happen. But also, if Bruce having an orgy with the Russian ballet was such huge news, how did Rachel and Harvey not hear about it until they got to the theater? I don't really understand why jumping off a boat full of Russian ballet dancers and swimming over to an airplane is any better an alibi than telling people you're sick and quarantining yourself at Wayne Manor. You are now inviting way more witnesses to tell people of your odd behavior in this case, even if you've paid them handsomely. Also, the newspaper said that Bruce took the Russian ballet dancers to the Caribbean. Now they're flying to Hong Kong in this dinky plane. How many fueling stops is this going to require? And how much riskier does it make the mission to do this stupid alibi? You want to know how I got these scars? Skip! I think, Mr. Fox, a simple phone call might have sufficed. The plan to take Lau out of Hong Kong should have raised all the red flags that Bruce Wayne could be Batman. A mysterious trip to the Caribbean with the Russian ballet, the disappearance off that boat, the CEO of Wayne Enterprises showing up in Hong Kong just before Lau's kidnapped, the weird thing with the cell phones that Lucius does. It wouldn't take long for some people to connect someone with the means to pull this off and land on Bruce. Hey, sir. Look, I'm certain this guard wouldn't figure out that Lucius left a phone designed to turn off all the power in the building, but I am absolutely certain that he would remember that Lucius left a phone here and that he didn't give it back. In fact, he'd probably also be wondering why Lucius even has a phone as he's walking out, since you're not supposed to have one beyond the first floor. The entire Hong Kong sequence deserves a sin-off for awesomeness. Just getting that out of the way now. Still don't know how these South Korean smugglers managed to fly into goddamn Hong Kong and back to Gotham without any military picking them up. But as we all know, smuggling stuff in and out of South Korea is probably the same as this, so no questions are required. And then Batman just lays an extremely wanted criminal out on the sidewalk, where any number of corrupt dickheads on the police force could hide him if they needed to. Why not the roof at the MCU? Turn on the beacon. Maybe give Gordon a call. She finds a Joker card in her folder and dismisses it. What the f***? There is a known killer criminal out here known as the Joker, and he is widely known to leave Joker playing cards at the scene of his crimes. This lady judge acts like it's a complete and total accident, doesn't give it a second thought, and has she been watching the news? 549 criminals at once. How did you convince Cirillo to hear this farce? This isn't even feasible. Any non-movie judge would have separated these defendants out like a normal court. For this fake Batman hanging, Joker would have needed to enter a government building with this guy undetected, throw him off the roof with a rope around his neck so that it would hit this exact window, and then go back through the government building again, undetected, even after the mayor likely would have called for a shutdown of some sort after seeing some shit like this. And timing it for when the mayor is in his office and at the window would be literally impossible. Rachel talks about you all the time. You, you've known her her whole life. Oh, not yet. Poor Rachel. So these two guys actually work for Joker and are not cops. And that's just for us, the audience, right? These houses are all touching each other. A neighbor is surely going to remember two guys here leading her to her car, right? This is a very convoluted plan. He snuck poison into the commissioner's desk, but he has to hire extras to bomb the judge? That's preposterous. Is it just a coincidence that the one victim of the three that Joker wants to kill personally is currently at Bruce Wayne's penthouse? Because I think it is. In a way, it's pretty lucky that this couple is up here f***ing during the Harvey Dent fundraiser, because now Bruce has witnesses that he slipped into a panic room when Joker arrived. Otherwise, how the hell are people not going to think he's Batman after this scene? He never shows back up to the party after Joker throws Rachel out the window. Well, hello, beautiful. Heath Ledger character is attracted to a Gyllenhaal cliche. A little fight in you. I like that. And you're gonna love me.
Wow, bravo to the party guests for not giving away that they saw Batman. Unless the movie is saying Batman walked in here without anyone seeing him until now. This element of surprise here is really the element of some lies. Drop the gun. It is kind of funny thinking about Bruce having to stop halfway through getting the Batsuit on to put an inch of eye black all around both eyes. They hit that taxi way too hard for Rachel not to have a bunch of broken bones. Let's not do that again. That's cute. Meanwhile, Joker is upstairs utterly terrorizing the remaining guests, having his henchmen tear the penthouse apart, finding the closet with the broom handle in it, and finding and killing Dent, and you say he's not doing any of that? He just apparently left? The hell? I really love this nighttime foggy shot of Batman invading the privacy of the entire city. He's putting it in tomorrow's paper. Goddamn Joker has a printing press, a manufacturing plant that makes custom playing cards, endless henchmen that just spawn when needed. How the hell did he get all this set up when he can barely go five minutes without three subject changes? As he himself later says, he's just a dog chasing cars, man, and yet he's somehow Dr. Manhattan. How do the contractors that built this underground concrete bunker lab not tell people about that job and speculate wildly that it was for Batman? I guess Batman ends up using that tenet technology to reconstruct the fingerprint on this bullet because it's goddamn impossible. You want him to do the diligence on the LSI Holdings deal again? Which, for some reason, I didn't stop doing after I was told the deal was off and there was no reason to do all this work anymore. You think that your client, one of the wealthiest, most powerful men in the world, is secretly a vigilante who spends his nights beating criminals to a pulp with his bare hands? And your plan is to blackmail this person? Several issues here. Dude never said he thought Bruce Wayne was Batman. He merely provided proof that Batman is using Wayne tech. It's a huge leap for Fox to assume dude suspected Wayne and an even huger shock that it turns out that's actually what he thought. Also, this is a great line and a great scene, but Fox should know better than to leave it at this, because as we see later, this guy is not going to just let this go. But because Bruce owns fast Lambos and Alfred can hack the local hospital database, he is able to save this guy's life. And there's the thumbprint he left when he pushed the round in the clip. But you do realize there's no telling who actually put that bullet in the gun, right? And there's a good chance it wasn't Joker, but rather some lifelong criminal already in your database with a bad address and this is all for nothing, right? And no, it's not for nothing, because Joker actually intentionally put a fingerprint on this bullet to lead Batman to an apartment, because he somehow knew that Batman would cut out a brick from a wall and run fancy pants forensics on it to be able to even see the fingerprint Joker planet. But also, don't bullets have casings? And then they leave the casing when the bullet is fired, and that would mean you're double, maybe triple shit out of luck when it comes to finding the fingerprint on this bullet. Lucius, I'm playing this one pretty close to the chest. I think you mean best make good on his threat in the obituary column of the Gotham Times to kill the mayor. Wait, he didn't print a fake paper, but instead somehow slipped a fake obituary for the f***ing mayor into the Gotham Times? You realize how many checks and balances are in place to keep people from just slipping their own news articles into the official newspaper of the city? Look, there are a bunch of cars over here on the left, trucks too, and a massive building that looks like a warehouse. Are you telling me none of them ever wonders why a motorcycle or the f***ing Batmobile, which we saw down here earlier, come racing out of a shipping container? What do you got on the roof? We're tight, but frankly, there's a lot of windows up here. <laughs> no sh Number of policies that he enacted as commissioner were unpopular. Policies that flooded my office with angry calls and letters. This is a hell of a eulogy. We're here to mourn a guy that, frankly, nobody really liked very much. <laughs> he took our guns and uniforms. What was your role in the funeral so that maybe I can stop whatever's happening? Never mind, I'll just look out this window instead. I am an amazing Where's Waldo player. Why didn't they tell Gordon's wife and kids about his fake death? Why couldn't they put them in a squad car, tell them what's up about the fake death, and then take them to the police headquarters where they could be safely protected and hidden from public view until the plan was over? You literally put a woman and her children through what will amount to years of trauma, all because you didn't trust them to keep a secret. This is evil. A fight scene in a room with a strobe light and you cut it to death? Why hasn't Nolan been hired by Marvel yet? From this height, Oh, wouldn't kill me. Not even if you landed on your head? His name's Schiff Thomas. He's a paranoid schizophrenic. Former patient at Arkham. How the f*** does Batman know that? I wasn't able to identify this guy before Harvey took him, and he's been beating Maroney's ass the last half hour. I remember sending this the first time, and there were people who said, oh, Batman totally knows every single person in Arkham, and I was like, f*** you, where has that been established in the Nolan universe? And then some asshole, a couple of assholes, tried to tell me this guy was f Scarecrow, and he is, of course, not the Scarecrow. Anything that could lead back to Lucius or Rachel? Everything except those boxes over there with lots of dates and writing on them. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. I've called this press conference for two reasons. Bruce, who is determined to turn himself in so the Joker will stop killing people, waits to do it at Harvey's press conference instead of just going to Gordon. And thank God he does, because Harvey's going to turn himself in as the Batman instead. I am the Batman. Bruce allows this to happen, knowing full well that the Joker probably wouldn't believe this nonsense. The movie's done an okay job of making it seem like Harvey 
Kirby could be Batman, but we're talking about someone who could put the pieces together to know this is a total lie. They have a helicopter escort, and that motherfucker didn't help check if the route to county didn't maybe have some apocalyptic fires on it. Obstruction ahead, obstruction ahead. Damn it. All units, divert down on the lower fifth. I repeat, exit down. Lower fifth will be like turkeys on Thanksgiving down there. It's downright unbelievable that they can't divert this convoy somewhere else or have a backup plan in place and that going below ground is considered the best choice. You can't go around. Are you telling me you'd rather go to an unprotected area than drive on the sidewalk for a little bit to get back on course? There's even a park next to that sidewalk in case you need more room. This truck comes out of nowhere to hit the lead armored car, but the armored car holding Harvey that is directly behind it somehow misses running right into the truck as they do this maneuver, which is goddamn impossible unless editing covers it up, which it does. Why didn't Joker just use the rocket launcher at the very beginning. I didn't sign up for this. Dude, you are in what is basically the military for cops. You signed up for this. Two different times in a row, Joker somehow misfires the bazooka to hit the police car in front of the SWAT van instead of the SWAT van itself, which is literally directly across from Joker. Is he trying to lead the SWAT van with the rocket that speed? And Batman didn't show up earlier than this because... Goodbye. That is some of the raddest shit I have ever seen in my whole damn life. This helicopter is about to be undone by a couple of wires between buildings, but this route was 100% determined by the driver of the SWAT vehicle, who, yes, is Gordon, but the movie isn't revealing that yet. So how were Joker's dudes ready for this? Did he have 100 guys and 100 buildings with harpoon guns to cover every possibility? There's a parallel universe where Batman accidentally kills these kids. Joker survives all sorts of this. As Batman pretends to be dead for a Joker who is pretending he doesn't want to get arrested by a Gordon who is pretending to be dead, I'd just like to remind you that I'm pretending that this makes sense. Gordon, you do like to play things pretty close to the chest. I think you mean vest. Again, even though last time it was Bruce saying that to Lucius and wait, you emphasize do here. As though you had also previously had a conversation with Gordon where he said he was keeping things close to the chest. And that definitely did not happen. What the f is with this fing line? Commissioner Gordon. It's about time. Gordon was probably wondering whose wife he had to f to get a promotion around. Oh. Harvey Dent never made it home. Says who? His girlfriend? She is also kidnapped, no? So who at the single DA's apartment reported that he never made it home? When the chips are down. These, uh, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. Entire point of the movie is how wrong this guy is about this message. And yet, this was 2008. As I looked around today, you might have a point, yo. There's only minutes left, so you're gonna have to play my little game if you want to save one of them. The Dark Knight steals the save one or the other game from Batman Forever. Why does the handle on this door go all the way down to the point where a small metal chair can be wedged under it? This is way too much handle. 250-52nd Street! Hey, and while you're at it, you might want to call this in over the radio. Maybe there are cops near both locations. I mean, worth a try, right? Harvey Danger. Talk me through what's going on with you. Well, Rachel, one of us is about to die, and I'm pretty sure it's me. And either way, we are both tied up next to a bunch of flammable barrels, and this is basically it. This is the end. I can't f***ing believe I let that kid in sixth grade take all my Transformers in exchange for a single valuable beanie baby. That is what's going on with me. Do you want to know why I use a knife? No. Duct tapes Joker's mouth shut. The end. I know you're gonna enjoy this. I'd just like to know why this guy even needed to be in here. He could easily have monitored Joker from the other room and had somebody stand guard outside the door. And since Joker's so important that he has a guard inside the cell with him, why not put his handcuffs back on? I mean, God damn it! What do you want? I just want my phone call. This works. After the inmate bomb goes off, it shreds a whole floor of the MCU, and somehow Joker is just by himself? Yeah, maybe the cops went to check on the explosion, but it's almost like nobody even runs this place anymore, to the point that Joker can just break Lao out with absolutely nobody around. It's like this bomb was its personal retelling of The Leftovers, where people just disappear for no reason. And my answer is yes. Accepting a marriage proposal when one of you is going to die. Back at the MCU, the Joker's gone. How will they ever do phase five now? The Joker plan to be caught. Let's talk about the Joker's plan. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? Yes, you do. First, you assumed you were going to be caught in the first place. Odd, since you got arrested by Gordon, whom everyone thought was dead, who was supposed to arrest you if he didn't. You got sent to prison, knowing that some asshole with a bomb detonating phone sewn into his stomach was going to be sent to the same prison. You knew no one would check him for weapons or put him through a metal detector or any of that shit and that no one would care when he begged for a doctor. You knew that they'd ask you at the perfect time about Harvey's disappearance, even though Gordon's own guy was supposed to take him home. Then you knew they'd put some easily provoked hothead in your cell while the others went searching for Rachel and Harvey. I guess if this plan doesn't work, you could have a million others lined up, and even if you don't escape, you still create chaos, but the fact that this was your plan A and it got pulled off without a hitch is some massive bullshit. 
When I told you that if Gotham no longer needed Batman, we could be together, I meant it. But now I'm sure the day won't come when you no longer need Batman. Moving the goalposts. I love that Alfred, who knows Bruce's feeling for Rachel, was still going to give this devastating note to Bruce in his current condition until he found out Bruce thought Rachel was going to be with him. Then he takes the note back. Like, this letter's going to crush him regardless. Why did you even think about giving it to him right now? That bandit in the forest in Burma. Did you catch him? Yes. How? We burned the forest down. You burned down the forest to stop a guy from stealing? Do you know who picked up Rachel? The real question is, why did anyone pick up Rachel? Where was she being picked up from? Last time we saw her was just before Harvey was put in the armored van, and before that, she was at Bruce's penthouse. There was absolutely no indication that she needed a ride at any point during all this. Jesus, how did the fire miss burning his left eye? The whole left side of his face was engulfed in flames. How did he protect the eyeball? Building this makeshift to note to line out of bricks of cash only to burn it later. I'm only burning my half. I bet right about now, Lau wishes he never went to Summer Isle to mess with Christopher Lee and the annual harvest. I want you to call in every officer. Tell them to head to their nearest hospital and start evac and search. Why didn't I do this when Rachel and Harvey were about to be blown up? Who the f knows? I just got this commissioner's job. Holy sh there were a lot of Gothamites ready to immediately do murder. Why wouldn't this text just tell him immediately who he needs to watch out for? Just before his cell phone screen goes to this message, you can see two others sitting in his message queue as if Alfred texted this sh to him like he was on AOL Messenger. Dent didn't lose his mind until Joker removes the face mask. That's the wasn't already obviously Joker in a face mask. Also, how the f*** did Joker get here so fast? The last we left him, he was calling into the Anthony Michael Hall show to tell people to kill Reese or he'd blow up a hospital. Then, in just a few minutes, he's a Gotham general in a nurse's outfit. Was the big warehouse full of money located right next to the hospital? Or did he use his Joker powers to transport there? By the way, how did Joker set up all these explosives in the hospital in the short amount of time he had to do it? Even if you have people on the inside who can help you, this is a large-scale demolition that you wouldn't be able to hide from people. Give me the fire office on the light. Having people literally dial your own phone for you. Also, why are you asking Ramirez to do anything? You saw her name implicated on the text from Alfred. Guess we've got to thank good old Berg for that sh don't we? Once Berg was taken care of, nobody else could possibly be compromised, I guess. Then, somehow Joker kidnaps Engel and sets up this live broadcast, which means Joker took this bus and somehow found Engel, who we last saw on the street filming Gordon and the lawyer's escape, in the last five minutes or so. And this is definitely Joker behind the camera, as he can't help make an appearance by the end of this video. Mr. Fox? Security is showing a break-in at the R&D department. Why didn't Batman just call Lucius and tell him that he was going to be down at the R&D department, rather than triggering some sort of security breach that he would have to come investigate? Wouldn't the building security be prompted to investigate this? I'm Team Lucius here. Batman is a detective. Find the Joker. You don't need to sh**. And it is very stupidly illegal and wrong. Don't stop for lights, cops, nothing. From the moment this guy closes the door to the next shot where Maroney is giving his driver instructions, the car is already in full motion, which means Maroney somehow completely missed that Harvey was sitting next to him this whole time. It's either that or the car went from zero to 60 in half a second before the driver could even get behind the wheel. This is definitely chaos, as Joker advised him to do, but I still don't think he's done revenging enough to risk dying like this. Fox, there's something going on on the ferries. Yeah, no sh I'll hand it to Joker, he's constantly one or two steps ahead, but Batman not thinking about the potential danger of the fairies once Joker threatened the bridges and tunnels is malpractice. Batman, the greatest detective in the world, should have focused all his energy on those fairies and simply called Lucius about the unethical cell phone sonar set up down in R&D. Wait, Joker's reading from a script? I thought he doesn't plan, there was a whole speech about it. Barbara, it's Anna Ramirez. Jim needs you to pack up and put the kids in the car right away. Like, the incompetence of Gordon is astounding here. I don't blame his wife for trusting Ramirez, but the question running through my head would be, why couldn't he call me himself? Even if you're busy, you apparently had enough time to tell Ramirez all this shit. so why hasn't Gordon told his wife, don't trust anybody except me if you get a phone call telling you to do something? We don't have time for I want everybody! <laughs> She's right! Where's my family? where my family died. Well, you and Rachel were dating who asked her to marry you, but she was kind of dragging her feet on answering, so you guys weren't family at all. Fox, the SWATs are targeting the wrong people. The clowns are the hostages. It's at times like these, I wish I had a direct line to Gordon, so I wouldn't have to leave like this to chance. The tally is 140 against 396.4. Oh, you do not have 536 tiny slips of paper in that helmet. We're still here, and that means they haven't killed us yet either. 
Yeah, but they also could be like Pennsylvania and count their mail-in ballots last, meaning there could be a lot of people who want to blow up the boat right now, but the don't-blow-up-the-boat crowd skewed more mail-in, causing a delay and potentially a stop-the-count chant that is making it hard to tally the outstanding votes. Oh, who could have predicted that dogs would be a factor in this movie after Batman explicitly noted that dogs were the weakness to the new Batman armor? Why couldn't this asshole have built some web fluid to come out of his wrists to trap dogs if he encountered them? I think we removed a sin for Tiny Lister's character throwing the detonator away last time we did this, so we shall end this one as well. I have no idea how Batman's wrist projectiles work, but I find it hilarious how they aren't in this shot, but in a few seconds, Batman's got the whole battering bonanza exposed. His other arm is trapped behind the bar, so how did he press the proper buttons? We'll never know. Batman throws Joker out of the building, and despite having a huge head start, Batman's able to shoot this grappling hook straight down and catch him before he falls, which is some monumental bullshit. The movie cheated on how far Joker fell before Batman shot that thing. Where are the wounds that should be on Joker's face and neck after Batman shot the blades into him? See, madness, as you know, is like gravity. All it takes is a little push. Gonna go ahead and remove three sins for this performance, even if I've removed sins for it already. It's crazy what an MVP Heath Ledger was in this movie, to the point where The Dark Knight Rises noticeably misses him and his character. We imagine him behind the scenes in that movie, but it's not the same. Not by a long shot. Harvey being this mad at Gordon makes zero f***ing sense. It was Gordon's men that betrayed Dent and Rachel. Everyone else he's gone after had direct impact on the death of Rachel, but not Gordon. He said that thing earlier about thinking Gordon's people were crooked back in the day. Is that the extent of this grudge? You don't want to hurt the boy, Harvey. God damn it, Batman. If you showed up all stealthy like this, why didn't you just sneak up, grab the gun, save the kid, and incapacitate Harvey already? We know you have the capability to do that. My turn. Wait, why are you going second? If you get tails, there'll be nobody left to shoot Gordon. Why am I asking this? <laughs> Thanks, Batman. Seems like you could have done this five f***ing minutes ago. Five dead, two of them cops. Two-Face killed the cop, Wurtz, one of Maroni's henchmen, Maroni and Maroni's driver, and then he punched Ramirez. So I don't know where you're coming up with this five figure or two cops unless Ramirez died from that punch after the coin toss saved her life. I killed those people. That's what I can be. Aren't people gonna wonder why you killed those people and didn't kill one person in that building with Joker tonight? You don't have to be a professional detective to know that makes no sense. Why can't those just be unsolved murders or gang related or whatever? Why the f*** does Batman need to take the blame for this if no one could prove Harvey did it? Okay, Alfred, I didn't want you giving this letter to Bruce right after Rachel died, but I don't think burning that f*** is ethical at all. Because he's the hero Gotham deserves but not the one it needs right now. Boy, that sounds great. This line will be infinitely repeatable for years to come, even though it makes f***ing no sense. You'll be in a padded cell forever. Maybe we could share one. You know, they'll be doubling up the rate this city's inhabitants are losing their minds. It is a good plan until her water breaks all over Robert De Niro's shoes. My shoes, hey, there's all this baby goo on it. These shoes? <laughs> Hey, on these shoes? Did you puke on my shoes? <laughs> you, did your water break did you on puke my on my shoes? Hey. I lost three crews there this month. What about the east side? There we got a much bigger problem. A long time ago, I was in Burma. Uh, you most likely know it as Myanmar, but it'll always be Burma to me. Your name, sir. I've gone and done it again. Let me get this straight. $40 million computer tells you you're chasing an earthquake, but you don't believe it. And you come up with this on your own. Let me tell you something, my friend. Hope is a dangerous thing. Hope can drive a man insane. It's got no use on the inside. You better get used to that idea. Are you my two o'clock? No. Can I help you? What happened? He took our guns. He he put that thing on me. Then 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 he made me wear it. Then he he he, he told me to f her. Then I did. You don't think I will? You won't hurt me because you're a policeman. There are rules for policemen. Let's do it again. 1958. It's been traveling 22 years to get here, and now it's here, and it's either heads or tails. Harvey called. Hi, Harvey. Do you want these gourmet chili beans? I gave up sweets for Lent. Come on! Come on! Come on, come on. I want you to do it. I want you to do it. Come on, hit me. Come on, hit me. Come on, hit me. Come on, hit me. I want you to hit me as hard as you can. You see, I'm a guy of simple taste. I like simple pleasures, like 
butter in my ass, lollipops in my mouth. That's just me. That's just something that I enjoy. I want you to call in every officer. Tell them to head to their nearest hospital and start evac and search. They bought it. Hook, line, and sinker.